As the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians continues to drag on through the years, people are beginning to lose hope in the peace process. We've recently told you about several peace initiatives, but the question now is, what will really work? Dr. Mordechai Keidar has spent his career studying the Arab-Israeli population. And he's here with us today to talk about some of the current issues in Israel and what might really bring about peace. Thanks so much for coming in. Pleasure. So first of all, there's this, a discussion right now about potentially bringing Malay Adumim and saying it's actually part of Israel and not in the West Bank. What do you think about that? Well, this is something which should have been years ago because in Israel there is a consensus that Malay Adumim and Gush Etzion and Ariel should forever be inside Israel or part of Israel. And by the way, Malay Adumim was built by the Labour Party when they were in power. So there is a consensus in Israel, almost totally, uh, to annex those uh, concentrations of uh, what they call settlements uh, to Israel in any solution which will be the, with the Palestinians. So this thing, if this is the consensus, this should have been there for long ago. Unfortunately, the Israeli governments, um, both on the right and the left side of the aisle, uh, were rather afraid from the Americans and the Europeans and all the others, and they didn't do the necessary thing. Okay, now moving to another hot, hot topic right now. Um, we have the French peace, in, peace Initiative that is obviously being talked about a lot as it's taking place this weekend, the conference, and also the Arab Initiative. Do you think either of these have a chance of working? They're different, but sort of similar? No, it will not work because all these plans are aiming at creating a Palestinian state which will be a conglomerate of tribes from Hebron, from Ramallah, from Nablus, Jericho, Kalkilia, Tulkarim, and Jenin, and Gaza. This cannot work because it will create a, a situation which will end up like Syria, like Iraq, like Sudan, like Libya, because the culture is the same. Tribalism is still alive and kicking in these areas. The only solution can be the Emirate uh, paradigm, which works very well in the Gulf, because Kuwait and Qatar and Dubai and Abu Dhabi and the other Emirates, and I exclude Bahrain, uh, are stable and nice, not because of the oil. Dubai has no oil, but because every one of them is based on one single tribe. And when you have homogeneous society, the state actually rests on this society, so the state is stable. While if you have fragmented societies, it is in Iraq, which is fragmented along tribal lines and ethnic lines between Arabs and Kurds and Turkmen and others, and religious lines, Muslims, Christians, um, Yazidis and others, and sectarian lines, Sunni Shia, when the society is so many a, a groups which never became one nation, it ends up as a mayhem, as you see. And the oil doesn't help you. So Iraq, in spite of the oil, is a hell, while Dubai, without oil, is a heaven. Now, the only solution, therefore, for the Palestinian issue is to create emirates based on the clans of the cities. In Hebron, an emirate for the Jabri and Kawasme, Nache, Tamimi, and Abu Snena tribes who lived together for centuries, very nicely. Another emirate in Jericho for the Arikads. Another. For, so for just a second, for our viewers that don't understand, you're saying that these tribes are these families, so they have an, these are groups that have lived together for years and years and years and generations, correct? Yeah. Yes, definitely. They live, they live peacefully, and they don't mingle with the others. They don't marry the daughters of the, to the others. They don't move to, because the other is the enemy. Why? Because of the culture of the Middle East. And this is even within the West Bank. These are different groups. Within, within the Middle East. Look, the language, the Arabic language, which is spoken in Hebron, is totally different from the colloquial Arabic, which is spoken in Nablus, because these are two different tribes which lived separately for centuries. In Gaza, it's totally different Arabic, because in Gaza, the Bedouin element in the population is much bigger than in the West Bank. So uh, uh, the Bedouin language is totally different. So what I'm saying is that the only solution is to establish emirates based on the societies in the cities, which, is, which are homogenous, more or less, 
while Israel should forever remain in the rural areas, to make sure that we don't get another Hamastan with terrorist contiguity, either by elections, as already happened in 2006, or by coup d'etat, as happened in Gaza in 2007. Nobody in the world has the guarantee that a Palestinian state will never end up like a Hamastan. So in order to bring peace, in order to bring stability and prosperity, you have to create or to emulate the paradigm which succeeds in the Arab world, the emirate one, and not to emulate the paradigm which fails, which brought Syria and Iraq sure. and, and, and Libya and Sudan and Yemen to the situation which we see today. Palestinian state will end up like Syria and Iraq and Yemen. Emirates will be flourishing and successful like Dubai, Kuwait, because this is a thing which is based on the sociology, not on dreams about peoples which do not exist. Now, final question. Based on your research, how many Emirates would you suggest are necessary to make that happen? Eight more or less. And one in Gaza is already a state. We didn't notice, but in two weeks from today, they will celebrate nine years of stable regime in Gaza by Hamas. I don't like them, they don't like us, but yet they are a stable state. They don't have real challenge to the government. They have an army, they have a police, they have a military industry, they know how to produce projectiles. They already passed three wars with us and they survived. They have borders, they have judicial system and legitimate regime and ministry of everything which they need. So this is a state and they function way much better than Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Sudan, uh, Libya combined. So if something looks like a state, functions like a state, it is not a duck, it is a state. So we have to recognize Gaza. Okay, and we have to live with them in some kind, some kind of deterrence, just like we lived with Egypt until the peace agreement was signed in 1979, or with Jordan until the peace of 1994. We know how to live with entities which do not like us. The same thing is with Gaza. It is a state, and actually the Hamas gave the first shot in the head of the Palestinian dream to have one state, because they are already the state in Gaza. Sure. So we can follow this line and continue the line which Hamas began by creating emirates in Hebron for the clans of Hebron, in, in Jericho, Ramallah for the Bargutis, Bar by the way, uh, in, in Tulkarem for the Karmis, in, uh, in uh, Nablus, a, a state or an emirate for the Masri, Tukan, and Shaka clans, and so forth in Kalkilia and Jenin, while Israel should remain forever in the rural areas, offer Israeli citizenship to the villagers, which are more or less 10% of the population, no demographic, demographic uh, uh, threat, and the 90% will have their own states free, and we can support them, we can help them. They, have, they need access to the sea, access to the Ben Gurion airport. It's okay. And I will make sure that all the pipes which they import will be made of plastic, <laughs> not made of iron. And well, you know exactly why. Well, it sounds like a, an amazing theory, and thank you so much for explaining it to us. And thank Pleasure. you for coming in today.